By now, you've surely heard about Smile Direct Club, and that company is shaking up orthodontics. Uh, the company offers an alternative product to braces where people can align their teeth at home at a much lower cost. Mind you, Smile Direct Club isn't for everyone, but the company's television advertising seems to skip that. It is on their website, though. Anyway, they recently announced a mind-boggling $430 million of revenue. I mean, that's almost unicorn status. It's not quite there yet, but $430 million is a lot of money, and it's basically 40, $430 million that's shifting away from orthodontists. The company's operating at a loss, um, and it's facing legal headwinds. Uh, but guess what? You might think that that's important. I don't think that's important at all. Amazon operated at a loss. You could see a lot of these companies that have taken risks, um, certainly in the last 20 years, who are changing our culture, like Amazon, Uber, um, all of these companies. And maybe Uber is a bad example, but still, it's the change in culture that is important here. And it's, it's the impact that these companies have on the way we live and the way we do business. And I think that's what's happening here with Smile Direct Club. So the similarities are, are, are many, including controlling the message. One of the things that I'm seeing from an advertising perspective is that Smile Direct Club is everywhere. They're on TV, direct mail, they're on social media. They really have controlled the message. Um, you know, and much like Amazon, they're making life easier uh, and less expensive for people to straighten their teeth. Um, they've also provided access. They basically opened up the market to a, 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 a community that never had access to orthodontics before, right? Because they couldn't afford it and now they can. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I would argue that that's a good thing. It's a market that previously didn't exist before. The price threshold was, uh, was much, much higher. And so Smile Direct Club said, you know what? We're gonna make it a little bit lower and we are going to not solve the entire problem. We're gonna try to solve some of the problem. So they basically, delivered and opened up a market that didn't exist before. The lesson to be had here, and I think it continues to be learned, right? I mean, we're learning so much every day as new technologies come on board and new companies open up markets, is that orthodontics, dentistry, even medicine, um, all those things are becoming democratized, much like all of the other industries that have been disrupted. But I think more importantly in this particular case, uh, I think that those industries like orthodontics, medicine, uh, and dentistry are actually in a better position to capitalize on this cultural and technological shift than most startups because they have the relationships, they have the experience, and they have the patience, right? And so they have to learn to adapt. And so instead of complaining about it, instead of denying it, if they could only adapt to the market, they can take advantage of it. And so that $430 million shift wouldn't have to be so drastic and they can actually keep some of that and in fact build on it. So they have the patient base, they have the trust of their patients, right? They need to deliver the value that patients have come to expect now. And guess what? They have to tell a better story, right? They have to tell a better story and that's how you do it.